thanks for allowing us to introduce the Ocean Teacher Global Academy of uh, the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission of UNESCO. So uh, the, we, we call it OTGA in short. It's a, a long-term it's a, a long-term project of the of IOC of UNESCO, and its second phase uh, started in um, in 2020, precisely when COVID, the COVID pandemic hit. Um, the project builds on the legacy of previous projects and includes a new initiatives uh, such as the um, the UN Agenda 2030 and its SDGs, and also the UN Decade for Ocean Sciences for Sustainable Development. The main goals of the Ocean Teacher Global Academy is to, to deliver uh, packaged courses that address the needs of um, the IOC member states and its partners, and uh, the training courses are uh, for uh, continuous professional development and include topics such as marine spatial planning, implementing international marine law, preparedness for um, uh, natural disasters like tsunamis, and so on. Um, however, this was not the case for many, many years, and in fact, the history behind goes back to the, the 1980s, when training courses were organized very much uh, ad hoc, mainly in African countries. And an important milestone was reached in 2005, when the project office for IODE of IOC was established in uh, Ostend in Belgium. And this function, this place functioned as um, the single international training center for many years. So everyone would travel to Ostend to, to attend a training course that was um, normally five days long, 30 hours workload, and would be able to, um, to, um, to train around 20 people per course. Of course, this model worked for some time, but, um, but uh, it became a little bit obsolete uh, um, soon. And, 20, and in 2015, we moved into what we call now the Ocean Teacher Global Academy with um, the establishment of training centers around the world, range, ranging from Asia to, to Latin America and Africa. We were already using Moodle, but in a very, very rudimentary way. We were just trying to sell the idea of using a learning management system. And then in 2020, 20, we expanded to, uh, 20, uh, to 16 training centers. But as you all know, uh, 2020 brought uh, lots of surprises and the world froze for a while. Um, and so we had to really um, reinvent our approach to, to continue providing training for, uh, for our community. And this is where we were extremely happy to already being, uh, having some experience with, um, with using the, the Moodle uh, platform. And since then, uh, the, our Moodle platform became the backbone of Ocean Teacher. And we've been providing training courses um, uh, strictly online since, uh, since 2020 as um, mainly uh, instructor-led uh, online courses uh, being organized from the regional training centers. Now, of course, that uh, moving to fully online uh, learning uh, brings many challenges, as you probably um, are aware. And to start with, we realized uh, the, how big the misunderstanding is what, of what e-learning is. And um, most of our training centers and the instructors there just wanted to um, transfer directly what they were using, doing in the, in the classroom, and, and basically streaming their, their classes. We've been trying to demystify this idea since then. And, um, and in, in this process, we've, um, we've come, came to with many challenges. Um, I think perhaps the very first one is the low digital literacy. We've had a, a very interesting talk just before the, the keynote talk talking about digital skills and digital literacy. And I, I was a bit struggling in the sense that it was indeed very European focused. Uh, we're working with African countries, with Asian countries. It's a completely different story with small island developing states as well. Um, but in a nutshell, we had three levels of challenges. 
at the learner level, we have way more people enrolling to our courses. Um, we got lots of attention. However, the engagement is much lower and the commitment is much lower. So, of course, there's lots of, um, well, a considerable uh, dropout rate uh, of the learners. As I mentioned, the instructors started uh, directly transferring the, the, what they was, were used to do during the, in the classroom, but of course this doesn't work. So it took us lots of coaching um, of, the, of the, our instructors to start moving from, from that. And of course they were also a little bit, um, um, they overestimated themselves regarding um, how much they were able to use a learning management system. There's a learning curve there as well. And of course, technical uh, issues uh, with uh, the spread of our training centers, time zones are a gigantic puzzle for us. Um, we've installed Big Blue Button, which we're a fan of, but there's lots of problems with that, especially firewalls. Uh, we have lots of complaints about that. So we started um, trying to tackle some of these issues. We actually brought an e-learning designer to our team and, um, and we, we did a, a needs analysis. So we asked our instructors at our training centers what they were able to do already based on the, this study examining faculty perception uh, of their readiness to teach online. And the results were quite uh, surprising because, as I mentioned before, they definitely overestimated their capabilities, their skills, because we contrasted this with the, the contents, the training courses that were uploaded on the platform. So this was definitely not um, so okay. And for uh, to, trying to address this, we've, um, we've created uh, our own um, course on uh, designing and teaching online courses uh, for our own instructors and using their own courses as mini projects that they would be as assignments that they would have to do uh, during um, these courses. This course takes more or less 15 hours to, to follow. We've also developed uh, tutorials and specifically focusing on using the, the lesson tool in Moodle because we definitely like it very much and I see Mary <laughs> nodding. Um, and and uh, also uh, make sure that we have one-to-one -one coaching sessions with um, each um, uh, training center's instructors. And then uh, we've also um, developed a course template because they were quite lost and, and the, the, the courses were looking really not so good. So we've developed a, a well-structured course template that um, includes all the placeholders that we believe are absolutely mandatory in a course. And these have been translated in the meantime uh, also to Spanish and Portuguese. Our main language is English, but uh, we also work with, um, with other languages. Um, and then um, to address the learner's needs, we also created a standard start year uh, section in each course, where we have, again, placeholders of everything that should go in there. I must admit, and my colleague is also here, so she will be smiling, it's incredible how adult learners don't read and don't want to follow instructions. So this is a, a mandatory section and everything else is not enabled in the course uh, as long as they don't complete reading this section, but they insist in not trying to read and send us emails saying, I can't see the course contents. Well, of course not. Um, and then, um, of course, we've had to reformat all, um, all the, the structure of our courses and what used to be a one week long on-site course is now at least three, sometimes up to six uh, weeks long training course with, um, with a few hours uh, per week of uh, individual assignments and eventually some live uh, or synchronous sessions used for Q&A with the, the instructors. So those are mainly our our approaches to help them um, uh, com complete the courses. We also have to have uh, lots of care regarding um, accessibility. So we actually 
do not promote the use of videos that much because that's very heavy in developing countries. And, um, and um, we try to, to promote um, not using linking to platforms that are not available in some member states. Uh, YouTube is very nice, but it's not available in every single member state. That's an example. And then to complete it, we've also implemented um, a quality matters rubric um, that is adapted from an uh, already existing one. And parallel to that, we are also ISO certified as a, um, as a learner provider outside formal education. Uh, sorry, one too fast. So, as you can see from these graphs, uh, this has been a, an uphill um, story. And you can see that uh, in 2015-16, when we started with the Ocean Teacher Global Academy and the regional training centers, we started um, being able to train a lot more people in the, in the different regions. Um, of course, we were impacted by COVID, but in 2021, um, we, we managed to train way more people than ever before. Um, so we really believe that uh, going online was um, a, a fantastic uh, move um, promoted by COVID. So not everything is bad about COVID. And another good side effect of this is that this was achieved with a much lower carbon footprint, which is also quite important. We've also managed to reach uh, areas uh, or audiences that we, it was very uh, difficult to, to reach, such as um, small island um, developing states in the, in the Pacific. And we also have some building evidence that um, we managed to train more women online than if it would have been a non-site training course. Um, so one, uh, one of the challenges identified by the, by the UN Ocean Decade um, that started last year is, is ensuring that skills, data, and technology are accessible for all. And this can only be achieved by the right training. Um, and we believe that through Ocean Teacher, we are contributing to that. However, we do see that um, like a lot of our training is very much hands-on, so practice-based training. And we see that there's lots of resistance to this change to moving online. And this is perhaps our main challenge, convincing our audiences that online is also a way of, uh, of getting things done. Um, so we'll be continuing trying to convince uh, our communities that um, we will we'll be using this further and further. And I, I often mention astronauts are trained on Earth, so we should be able to train um, ocean um, sciences or researchers also online. And I would not like to finish by mentioning the, um, the Qingdao uh, Declaration from UNESCO in, from 2015, where, um, which, which became the very first global declaration promoting the use of ICTs in education. And, um, and I would like to also have you promoting this um, and, and using this, this declaration to, to promote ICTs as, um, as a way of uh, promoting in, uh, inclusive and equitable uh, quality education and lifelong learning education. Thank you very much. And there's one minute left. <laughs>